the way we make voice is um, you have your windpipe and your voice, your vocal folds sit on top. And when we breathe, the vocal folds open in a wide V. And then when you talk, the vocal folds come together. But then the air passing between the vocal folds makes them vibrate. And that's what generates sound. It's sort of like a wind instrument or if you ever uh, took a blade of grass and blew, blew on it and made it vibrate, that's how we generate sound. So if you have a nodule or a polyp or something causing the vocal fold to be stiff and not vibrate freely, it can make the voice sound rough or raspy or breathy and it can affect the, the quality. If a patient is going onto the web and they're looking for information for a voice problem that they have, I think it's important that they try to find somebody who is fellowship trained in laryngology, who has specialty training in disorders of the voice. Because um, most of those individuals would then um, have specialty training on not only the surgical aspects of taking care of voice, but also the non-surgical aspects, again, the team approach um, to therapy and management with a speech pathologist, which I think is essential. I work very closely with speech pathology on these patients because a large component of treatment is, is therapy. Surgery is not typically the first line answer for a lot of the problems with the voice, um, especially in adult voice disorders, for example, where they may have developed lesions secondary to how much they have to talk in their job or how, for example, teachers, when they have to do quite a bit of talking, they have to speak loudly over large rooms, they may then get a vocal injury secondary to that. And the primary treatment is working with them on, on therapy, voicing technique, and then surgery is a second line treatment. In voice, uh, when we're doing surgery, we are doing it typically through the mouth um, with a microscope to really be able to evaluate the vocal folds well and you're doing fine microsurgery on um, areas that are just a couple millimeters, you know, but maybe a two by three millimeter space that you're operating in. Voice disorders really have a negative impact on people's lives and there's, there's quite a bit of depression associated with it. Um, individuals may withdraw socially when they can't communicate, they can't be heard, or they can't uh, communicate effectively. So when you're able to give someone back their voice, restore their ability to communicate, they're very, very thankful and very happy. And, it, and that's really, um, it's a great feeling to be able to do that for somebody.